Hey y'all, it's Sharla from the Hartsville Homestead. I'm here with a quick Bible journaling entry using the Creative Retreat Kit's newest release, Higher Ways. I'm going to be utilizing some of the pattern papers from the Faithfield Digitals, as well as a copy of the back of my devotional. Y'all know I like to keep my devotionals intact. I like to go back and reread them. And we're also going to be utilizing some pieces from the um, cardstock stickers. The uh, Hopefully, I'm going to incorporate this beautiful stencil. I love these stencils. And this one is a gorgeous pattern, this little diamond it's repeated in some of the papers. And so I want to put all of that together, hopefully in a little crafty paper tree. We'll see how it goes. Let's get started. I'm very excited about this entry today that I have in mind because I've seen these little paper piece trees before, some made out of washi, sometimes with fabric and whatnot. But I've wanted to create one for a while now. And the beautiful papers of this kit are perfect for this little project. Now I'm working in my illuminated scripture journal uh, for the book of Luke because my young adult group and ladies workshop that we had um, were reading through uh, the chapter, the book of Luke chapter a day as we get closer to Christmas. That way we are studying about the life of Jesus as our, our December focus. And so um, even though the account of the cross from our devotional is noted from John, I wanted to include this um, entry as part of this reading project that I'm doing. And I love the size of these journals. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and record that here. And I'm in Luke 23. Um, for this entry. I'm using the Tim Holtz Distress Paint in frayed burlap to lay down a little bit of background color. I was a bit ambitious and poured out a little more than I needed, but no worries. As soon as I finish here, I take that off screen and I pour it back into the original container. I don't waste craft supplies around here. Mm -mm. No way. Um, as we are literally going to now watch paint dry, I am off camera cutting um, the paper pieces, the swatches, into randomly sized, um, kind of sort of like little triangles and angle pieces. Um, that way I can build my tree from that. But of course you could speed up the drying time if you had a, a heat tool or dryer, but I took mine down to the shop and I left it there. So I just decided to multitask while I was letting that dry. Now, as it dried, I felt it was a little bit darker than what I had wanted. So as I tried to pull some of the color off, I realized that I could get a little two-tone look. Now my initial intention with this stencil was to lay another layer of color on top of that. But when this came out too dark, I didn't want to put another dark color on top and then have all the colors and patterns going on with my tree. So as I was trying to pull color off, decided I could use this stencil as a reverse. And so I laid it down. Um, I did wet my page a little bit so that I could pull some of that uh, distress paint back off. And then I just put a wipey in my hand and I'm going through and randomly, um, putting this uh, little diamond stencil down, rubbing that wipey across, and I'm pulling some of that dark off. Now I'm going to cover a lot of this. You'll see that from the bottom up, but this does open up the top a little bit. It gives a subtle pattern. It looks a little bit stronger here on the camera, um, but um, it does really work well, almost like a little wallpaper behind my tree as if it were in a, a scene in a home. Now I do love this distress paint it's so light and a little bit forgiving because i did get a little bit on the page uh, facing and i could just take my wipey and gently wipe that off and kind of remove the color so it cleaned that up now if you're in a book a uh, bible journal and you happen to get paint over there you could paint a border around you could continue you could find a way of working that little accident into your design if you wanted to now over the next several minutes here i'm going to simply be building a tree form from a paper cut. So I've put um, a layer of Mod Podge down to just simply hold them in place as I work. Um, this part of the page gets a little messy, but that's okay. Most of my pages are kind of a result of a creative journey, and I take lesson from that. Life can get messy at times, but the outcome from those moments can still be beautiful. So instead of getting too worried about how it's looking along the way, I continue on building and going upward with each piece, knowing that at the end, I'm going to have a whole tree together, and I think it's going to look uh, cohesive. So I'm really happy with how it looks in the end. I think it's really cute. It's not meant to be a perfect uh, triangular shape. It kind of goes back and forth, and is a little wonky at times, but I really do like it. This devotional that Jesse wrote for our kit this month is the perfect following for me as um, my study last month's kit focused on God's plan for our lives. Uh, Jesse's illustration of God as my pilot 
and me as a passenger just reinforces that my trust is safe and secure in my sovereign God. It isn't my job to be in control, but to trust and to learn and to grow from my God who has the perfect plan for my life. Even if I don't understand the course that I'm on at every second, every moment of my entire life. My favorite quote from her devotional this month says, as children, as his children, God shows us that our strength is not in strategizing as others do, but in trusting the Lord and his sovereignty. Belief in his sovereignty cannot answer all my questions, but it can be an answer to my fears. Even when we don't know, I think especially when we don't know what's going on in our lives or we feel like it's out of control, that's when fears can start to arise. And this is really good devotional and study to reinforce um, that our trust can be placed securely and that we don't have to know where we're going, but we know who we're going with. God does not sacrifice any of his goodness in order to exercise his sovereignty. And I love all of the the promises and the ties back to where we can get our strength from in those times from this devotional. Now, I know I have mentioned this before probably several times, but the devotionals in each of these kits truly is wonderful. They always seem so timely uh, for me, and um, they're rooted in scripture with several verses that you can study, cross-reference, and journal, and do multiple entries. Um, this month's Faith Art Box is actually designed by Ashley with Legacy of Love Creations. I'm a huge fan of her work and her lettering style. Uh, she's done other illustrations and lettering in previous kits too. So if you have a subscription or you have some of those previous kits, you can start pulling those things together and mix and match um, some of those pieces, the stamps or the stickers, and, and create additional pages from that too. You know, these kits are minimal in their design, and I love that. They're simplistic, but they have so much content with it and, and so many different resources and pieces that you truly can go a long way with it, but then you don't have a lot of stuff left over for storage. And if you do have pieces, like I, I like to keep my devotionals. I like to keep the sticker sets, anything that I'm, you know, I kind of stash some stuff aside, but I do it in a small little box. So it doesn't take up a whole lot of space either. And I really do like that. I appreciate that. Now, as you see me finishing up my tree here, when I do finally get it constructed and completed, I do seal it with a good layer of Mod Podge. You're gonna see me kind of go putting that on here in a little bit. One thing I didn't foresee, and I realized as I was putting my Mod Podge on is that I did use a laser, um, not laser, inkjet printer uh, when I was printing out my, um, my paper swatches. So when I put the Mod Podge liquid on top, and I pretty, pretty generous layer of it. Uh, it started to pull some of that uh, color up. Now it's minimal. It's really, you don't see it from a distance. You really don't notice it in my finished page, but as I was brushing it across, I did notice. So I tried to be careful and not brush across too many times or crisscross the coloring, like the dark over the light. I tried to pay attention to that just a little bit. Uh, but that's just one thing to think about as you're working through and um, working with mixed media. Sometimes it doesn't want to work well together and that's okay you can make it make it work um after i finish sealing it up i do think it's time to add some ornaments to my tree i love that that's my favorite part of christmas decorations getting it out and putting the ornaments on the tree i am a collector of ornaments and so this year i had to spend a lot of time going through ornaments both of my girls who have just recently married it was time for us to sort through ornaments so we got all of the boxes down and we had a good time going through um, and, and sorting them out for them to take some of the keepsakes, some of the things they've made, some ornaments they had kept over the years and them take them for their own tree in their own home. Um, but I love ornaments and now my boxes have room so I can start collecting a few more, I suppose. Uh, but I um, decided to decorate this tree with some of the enamels. I have a little stash off to the side. So I just randomly uh, start placing those little round circles um, all over this tree and I took multiple colors to do that. I think I had some gold, bronze, uh, some silver, uh, solid white, even a little bit of iridescent white, um, kind of from previous kits that I keep them off to the side so I can pull them together um, and, and do projects like this so I can mix and match some of those colors. It also brought a little bit of dimension to my tree and a little bit of sparkle. Um, I did pull also some of the little star enamels to use in there and just 
fun little whimsical ornaments all over my tree and kind of works with the patterns that were in the papers. Um, I thought they were really cute. I'm creating my title for this page from the hand lettered stickers that were in the kit. And I always like to put together some of the words to create a phrase. It reflects my big takeaway from my study. And here I wanted to pull together these words that say his ways are always good. I'm trying to decide how I want to place them on the page. And when I first lay them down, the background, it kind of just started going away and disappearing into the background. And I wanted that title to have focus. And so I decided to pull them back up, cluster them together off to the side. And just by bringing that cluster, it just seems you see it, you read it together and it wasn't so segmented. And so now I'm just going to embellish this little cluster area with some of the wonky hearts. I'm going to highlight the wonky hearts with a little bit of an enamel heart and that way it ties into my tree and adds a little bit of a glitter flare there as well. Um, I'm going to place several around here and then as I'm doing that I'm already noticing that I've got a little bit of an empty space sitting over onto the left side of my page and so I'm kind of processing with the stickers and I'm going to fill that with some of the little little doodle stars that are in um, circles. I decided to kind of drop them over to the left and um, make them look like little ornaments that are kind of floating or hanging from the top of the page. And so I um, highlight those as well. I bring some of the little circles, uh, the enamel circles, and, and put them in the middle. And uh, that way they kind of match uh, the rest of the page. And it just ties it all together. And here I'm just going to work on finishing it up and um, bringing some cohesiveness to it. I do a little bit of doodling um, also to bring those give those little ornaments a little connection to the top so that way they're not just sitting over there uh, with no purpose. I'm going to give my text a quick outline as well to tie it in with the black lines that I did around the ornaments and that should pretty much finish up this page. I've had fun with this crafty little page and I'm looking forward to my reflection journal with this kit. If you'd like to join me with the Higher Ways kit, I'll put a link in the notes below. I've enjoyed being with you today and I hope you all have a wonderfully blessed day.